Good morning, good morning everybody. Dylan K. Johnson here and welcome back to a new video. Today is going to be a very special one. You may have seen me tease this on my Instagram story last weekend. Um, this week we're going to be talking about how to build and how I built these custom DIY sliding dumbbell shelves. So you can see here I've got them expand or over the entirety of the bottom of one of my dumbbell racks. And the way these work is there's some wheels underneath and they just slide on out. Allows you to easily store and then again access some of these heavier dumbbells. Um, these are kind of light right now. These are only up to 75 under here, but these will eventually be used to store my 80 through 100 pound dumbbells. So slides right on out slides right back in place. And as you can see, these are also sliding on top of my horse stall mat. So my rubber flooring, which is something that I was initially kind of worried about, um, especially once I start adding on like some heavier weight, which if we come over to this one, you'll notice that that was a two section or a two pair shelf. This one has three. I probably would not recommend going over three. Um, just because even with three, it gets a little bit harder to move. Still moves relatively well, but I probably would not recommend going over a three section unit just because of how much weight it is, especially if you're rolling it across a rubber flooring. I would probably, like I said, recommend not going over three or maybe even two, depending on how heavy of a dumbbell you're storing. All right, now that you've seen what we're going to be building today, let's start getting into some of the measurements for this build. I'm gonna cover some of the absolutely crucial measurements that you need to take to be able to determine if this is even going to work. And then we'll kind of go on from there and talk about my measurements that I used specifically. And I'll just talk about whether or not those specific measurements will work for you or if you will need to adjust them to fit your own rack. Um, unfortunately, I can't give out exact measurements for everybody's racks just because there's so many friggin' dumbbell racks out there. Um, but I will say, if your rack is longer on the inside width, so from inside edge to inside edge, if it is longer than 88 inches and you have more than 13 inches of clearance from the ground to the bottom of your rack, this build will work the exact same as the way I have it here. So meaning the exact same measurements that I give you today will work for your build. If your rack has less clearance, either height wise or length wise, you will need to adjust the measurements to fit your own rack. I cannot state that enough. I cannot make that disclaimer enough. Again, if your rack does not match or exceed the measurements of my rack, this build will need to be adjusted. So. Hopefully that kind of is a good disclaimer and hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Now, moving on from there, let's start talking about the key measurements. First and foremost, like I said, the clearance that you have underneath the dumbbell rack where you're going to be storing these dumbbell sliding shelves is going to be crucial. First off, measure that clearance. I personally have 13 inches of clearance between the ground and the bottom of my dumbbell rack. Next up is going to be the height of the sliding shelves themselves. They are three and three quarter inches tall. This height is very likely non-negotiable. You probably cannot reduce the height further. Um, at least I personally would not recommend it because that would involve going with thinner material and that would really uh, greatly reduce the overall strength of the sliding shelves. So anyway, three and three quarter inches is the height of these shelves. Next, you need to add on the diameter or the height of the largest set of dumbbells that you're going to be storing on these shelves. So for mine, I have rubber coated pro style dumbbells and they are the same exact diameter from the 15 pound dumbbells all the way up to my 100 pound dumbbells. If I had 140 to 150 pound dumbbells, they would be exactly the same because they all use the exact same plates. For me, that is an eight inch diameter on my dumbbells. If you do not have enough clearance for the shelf plus your dumbbells, a very simple solution is to raise your dumbbell rack. The way I would recommend doing this is to simply throw the dumbbell rack onto a couple of two by fours. Each one is gonna give you an extra, what is it, an inch and a half of clearance. 
so that you can just kind of lift the dumbbell rack up a little bit and get it a little higher off the ground. Give yourself a little bit more clearance underneath the dumbbell rack for these shelves. Either two by fours or say two by sixes, whatever you wanna do, I would just kind of recommend that whatever you do end up going with to try and bolt the dumbbell rack directly into those two by fours or two by sixes, um, just so it doesn't potentially shift and slide uh, off of those, because that could cause some pretty bad issues. Um, so yeah, if you do end up raising or elevating your dumbbell rack using like some two by fours, just find a way to bolt them to bolt the feet to those two by fours. So if it slides, if it shifts, it's not going to slide off of them. So that's our big kind of first key measurement. There is our clearance with that out of the way. Next up is going to be the width of the rack. As I said with mine, even though my racks are 96 inches long, the inside width is only 88 inches. So like I said, if your dumbbell rack has an 88 inch width clearance, then the exact measurements that I give you will work for your dumbbell rack as well. Or if it's greater than 88 inches, it'll work as well, unless you wanted to kind of modify them to fit it a little bit more snugly, that's up to you. But yeah, for my rack, I have 88 inches in terms of the width or the length, whatever you want to call it, of clearance to build my dumbbell shelves. So from there, let's move into materials. First and foremost are two by fours. I for this build specifically, for my measurements, I needed six. Six two by fours, eight foot length. Next up, we need one by twos, eight foot length minimum. We need 140 inches total, so we need two of those. Then, we are going to need the wheels. Now, the wheels took me a lot of research to find something that would work both in terms of the height and the load capacity. For these specifically, I have four wheels per pair of dumbbells. So essentially I've got two wheels per dumbbell. They are rated at 70 pounds each, meaning that theoretically I could store up to 140 pound dumbbells on these sliding shelves. Now, if you're going to be storing heavier than 140 pound dumbbells, first off props to you for even having or needing heavier than 140 pounds. Um, I am more than fine with just up to hundreds, maybe like 110s or 120s but you could always just add on another pair of wheels for each dumbbell or whatever you need to do to basically increase that load or maximum load capacity. Like I said, these will, as built, hold up to 140 pounds. Um, you might get into other issues if you go beyond that, mainly with sliding, especially if you're on like a rubber floor, but again, that's neither here nor there. So. I needed for my five pairs of dumbbells for the two pair and the three pair slides or drawers, I needed 20 wheels total. These wheels, I'll have them linked down below in the description. They will be the first link over to Amazon. Um, I think they come in like a 12 pack, so I had to pick up two of them. If you're gonna be building more, just figure out how many, how many you need for yourself and pick up as many as you need. The extras you can use for, I don't know, something else. Build another sliding thing somewhere, build a, glute ham roller slider thingy. I don't know, whatever you want to do with them. If you have extras, great. Uh, so you can always find something to do with them. But after that, the next thing that I needed, I'm a little bougie. I went with five handles. These handles probably cost less than a dollar. Um, again, I'll have them linked down below in the description. Uh, you can, if you really wanted to, just use a couple of like scrap pieces of the one by two and just zip in a couple of little small sections in order to give yourself something to grab onto these shelves to pull them out and push them back in. For me personally, I like the fit and finish of having the actual handles there. I use one for each set of dumbbells, so I needed five of them. And they just kind of, like I said, elevate the look and appeal of them. They make them look a little bit better. So yeah, that's just kind of what I did. They aren't necessarily needed. They help in order to like pull out the slides, pull out the drawers. They give you somewhere to grab instead of grabbing the dumbbells, because when you grab the dumbbells and you try to just use the dumbbells to pull them out, sometimes the dumbbells will slide on the short, on the drawers themselves and the drawer won't slide. Um, so, I don't know. Like I said, the handles, not needed. They help, they're really nice. I think they look good. I would recommend them. Link down below in the description as well, over on Amazon. 
any of those Amazon links are affiliate links. If you do decide to purchase from those affiliate links, I do get a little bit of a kickback. It is greatly appreciated and yada, 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 yada. So moving on from there, the last couple things that you need are going to be the screws. Now, this is something that I have preached in my previous DIY videos. These screws are what I use. They are Spax uh, multi-material construction screws. Um, I use specifically two and a half inch number eights and one and a half inch number eights. Two I actually want to take a second and pause here because I technically misspoke. And the second set of screws we will need are a one and a quarter inch, not one and a half inch. So we need two and a half inch and one and a quarter inch. I have them correctly listed later on during the video on the parts list breakdown. But just anytime I mention them in this video, keep that in mind that I technically misspoke and we need one and a quarter inch. One and a half inch is too long. This brand specifically is what I would recommend because this is what I've used with every single one of my DIY builds. Using these screws without pre-drilling, I have never once had a board split on me. Being smart about it, of course, don't just drive them all the way through the wood, but using these, highly, highly recommended. I cannot speak highly enough about them. I will have them linked down below. It's going to be over to Home Depot is where I get them. Um, you might be able to find them on, I don't know, Amazon maybe, um, but Home Depot is my place to go for these guys. So that is all of the materials for this build. If there's any questions about any of that, let me know down below in the comment section or hit me up over on Instagram and I'll try to help you out. But basically that's the material breakdown. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. In terms of the tools that you will need for this build, you're going to need a tape measure, obviously. Next up, you're going to need a square. Then you're going to need a miter saw, preferably to get as straight of a cut as possible. You could do this with a, what is it? Circular, a circular saw, a jigsaw. You could do it with any of those, um, a hand saw, whatever it may be. Personally, I would recommend a miter saw just because it's going to be a lot quicker, it's gonna be a lot easier, and it's gonna be a lot more accurate. After that, the only other thing you're going to need is a drill. One thing that's nice about these screws is they come with the drill bit included, so you don't even need any kind of fancy drill bits. They have them included, it's a star bit. Um, so yeah, that's all the tools that you need for this. Really simple build. Um, now let's kind of get into all of the different cuts. 53 inch cuts, we're going to need four of them. Then we're going to need four 34 and a half inch cuts. Next up, again on two by fours, we're going to need seven 20 inch cuts. From there, moving to the one by twos, we're going to need to match those seven cuts and we're going to need to do seven 20 inch cuts on the one by twos. And that is pretty much all of our cuts. So like I said, this is a very simple build, very minimal cutting. With this, one kind of thing to mention here before I move on is the depth of these. So the 20 inch depth is how long my heaviest pair of dumbbells is that I'm going to be storing on these racks. So my 100 pound dumbbells are actually a little bit over 20 inches. They're about 20 and a half. Um, so that is why I went with 20 inch depth on these guys specifically. If you're gonna go anything narrower, I would personally just recommend sticking to at least whatever the length is of your heaviest set of dumbbells. Now that we've got all of our cuts done, let's move into the assembly. So we're gonna be starting things off with the main framework of the three pair, and then we'll move into the framework of the two pair. Um, with this, so for the three pair, we're gonna start off with our four 53 inch long cuts, four 20 inch long two by four cuts, and then we will also need our four 20 inch long one by twos. Starting off with all of the two by fours, you can see how I have them assembled here. I've got exact measurements for each section on screen now. Um, basically for the interior width of the bracers, so the width wise 20 inch bracers, there's 13 inches between each section. Um, that is how I just kind of measured it out. And then, and with all of these, we're making sure that we use the two and a half inch screws um, because we wanna go through each of our two by fours. So then next up, we're gonna flip the entire thing over and we're gonna use our one and a half inch screws and we're going to install the one by twos. 
With these, on each end, I made sure that I butted the one by twos up flush to the edges. And then for the interior two, honestly, I did not take any measurements. I just kind of eyeballed it and made sure that they were as centered as possible to the two by fours underneath. And I just zipped them down using the one and a half inch screws. So if you want to take exact measurements, be my guest, make it as pretty as possible. These are not structurally important. I guess the ones on the end kind of are so the dumbbells don't roll off. They're more just kind of as an aesthetic thing just to kind of segment out each pair's location. So they don't need to be precise. They don't need to be perfect. That's just how I did it. Now, getting into the wheels. So again, we're gonna flip the entire assembly back over and you can see here how I have the wheels installed. Basically, at each corner of these interior cross beam braces, whatever you wanna call them, each of the 20 inch width sections, I have a wheel installed. With this, I took the wheel and I basically butted it up against each of those two by fours to try and keep it as square as possible. And then I just installed four of the one and a half inch screws into each wheel. And this worked perfectly for me, as long as the cross bracer beams, whatever you wanna call them, are square and you butt the wheels up against them, they're going to be square and you're not gonna have any issues with it rolling. So moving on from there, Again, flipping it back over, if you really want to, you can at this point install the handles. I, again, I just kind of eyeballed them. I didn't take any exact measurements. Um, and you can install them just kind of one for each pair of dumbbells or however you want. If you even want to install them, it's up to you. You can figure that out. That's nothing, that's neither here nor there. So that's gonna be the complete assembly of the three pair drawer slide. Now we're gonna move on to the two pair. Everything is gonna be pretty much exactly the same. The only difference here is the internal width spacing on these cross bracers, the 20 inch cross bracers, is only 12 inches on this one. So just a little bit different measurements um, in terms of the width in order to be able to fit both of these underneath the dumbbell rack. Basically, they are 12 inches. So you can just make sure that you get the edge ones all the way square, build your frame out, and then just kind of center the center one and zip those down using your two and a half inch screws. Flip it back over, we're gonna install the one and a quarter inch, or not one and a quarter, we're gonna install the one by twos using our one and a half inch screws. Flip it back over again, and then we're gonna install all of the wheels. Same process for the three pair drawer slide, we're just applying it to the two pair. Um, like I said, I had all the measurements on screen. If you need to, you can go back, pause, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do, take a picture with your phone, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. So. That is pretty much the entire assembly of these drawer slides. Fairly simple build. Overall though, there are, like I was talking about earlier, some very key crucial measurements that you need to take to be able to determine if this is going to work for your setup. If your measurements do not line up with mine, then you can either make adjustments as needed, or if your measurements are greater than mine, then you can build it exactly as I have, and you might just have a little bit of extra clearance on each side of the drawer slides um, or a little bit of extra slot, whatever you wanna call it. So yeah, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, if you really want to at this point, you could, you could go through and stain these, paint them. Um, I might be a little bit hesitant to stain them without putting like a protective coating on them just because if your dumbbells are gonna be sitting on them, you want to make sure that you coat them with something like a polyurethane to protect your dumbbells from absorbing that stain. Uh, I might in the future go through and stain mine. But again, if you stain them, what I would personally recommend doing, apply a couple coats of stain, maybe sand them down a little bit, make sure you get all the edges off nice and clean, smooth. Um, and then after you get the stain on there, go through and apply a couple coats, three, four, maybe five of polyurethane just to make sure that the dumbbells aren't sitting directly on the stain because that could potentially damage the dumbbells. They could absorb the stain. Um, and it's just probably not a good idea to have them basically sitting on stained wood. Um, at least that's kind of my thoughts. I haven't done it personally, but I would probably recommend against testing that theory. Uh, better safe than sorry. So yeah, that's the build. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about it, let me know down below in the comments section um, or hit me up over on Instagram. Usually Instagram is kind of 
one of the better places, as I always say. Um, if you guys liked the video, definitely hit that like button, maybe share it with some of your friends, family members, whoever you want. But that is gonna be it for me today, guys. So hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've taken something away. If you did like it, I would really appreciate if you could hit that like button. It definitely helps out, helps kind of support the channel. Um, and if you guys feel oh so inclined, go ahead and subscribe because I have got another build, another dumbbell storage solution that's just as cool as this planned for the future. I got a whole book of ideas here. So we got lots of stuff planned for the future. This is gonna be a fun one. Um, but no, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you like the video, it definitely helps out. If you wanna subscribe, great. I got a lot of stuff planned. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.